Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 280. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like us his praise should sing. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise the everlasting King. Hymn number 280. scriptural this morning will be given by Shahidat from Maryland. I will read selections from Isaiah chapter 45. Thus said the Lord to his anointed, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, thou, thou, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. For thus said the Lord that created, that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, 
He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science Textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 12. Arise, ye people, take your stand, cast out your idols from the land. Above all doctrine, form, or creed is found the truth that meets your need. Christ's promise stands. They that believe his works shall do, his power receive. Hymn number 12.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here with our roundtable discussion, which is kind of like a training session in how to practice Christian science. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, or even if you'd like to listen again, you can find it on our website, plainfieldcs.com, and you will also be able to find it on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children that meets at 11 a.m., and that Sunday school has its own teleconference number so that children from anywhere can attend. In fact, we regularly have people, children attending via the teleconference from all over the country sometimes all over the world. <laughs> so if you don't live in the area and have a child of Sunday school age, call us, we'll give you the number, and we'll be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives literally saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And there's a nursery available for infants and toddlers at all of our services. Our next Bible study will be in two weeks. That'll be Saturday, December 11. So mark your calendars and uh, check the website for study questions and uh, look forward to joining us Saturday morning at 10 a.m. December 11th. And for those of you who have not yet purchased your calendar for 2022, we still have calendars available. This is your page a day desktop calendar with in, incisive and inspiring quotes for each day. The price is $15 for the first and $12 for each additional calendar mailed to the same address. Uh, and we were busy printing and mailing this week the November issue of Love is a Liberator, our magazine, was mailed on Monday. So if you haven't received it yet, it's in the mail and you should be getting it any day now. We have a number of websites in many different languages which reach virtually every corner of the world with the Word of God and this wonderful science of Christianity that Mary Baker Eddy has discovered for us. One of the articles that I would like to mention that is featured on our website is an article entitled Declaring What is True, by Edward A. Kimball. We are every day thinking things about ourselves. And it's important to take a minute and ask yourself, what am I thinking about myself? Am I declaring what is true, or am I declaring what is false about myself? This is a really good article. I recommend it highly. Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have a reading of a testimony of healing from miscellaneous writings, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Elsie from Alabama. Page 449. It is a little over one year since a very esteemed friend of this city invited me to partake of the heavenly manna contained in the revelation of science and health with key to the scriptures. I had, up to that time, been for 15 years a, vic a victim of hip joint disease. This eventually confining me to my bed, where I had been ten months when the Book of Prophecy was opened for me. 
I was not wrong in finding the light I needed that gave feet to the lane, enabling me now to go, move, and walk where I will without crutch or support of any description save the staff of divine science. In proportion, as my thoughts are occupied with the work in science, does the peace and joy come inwardly that transforms the blight of error externally? T.G.K. Tacoma, Washington. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 20 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Ancient and Modern Necromancy, alias Mesmerism and Hypnotism, Denounced. The golden text is from Romans. There is no power but of God. The responsive reading is from Exodus. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Bruce will now read. I will read from the Bible, Deuteronomy. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Isaiah and when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? 1 Samuel 
Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me, and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee and has become thine enemy? And the Lord hath done to him as he spake by me, for the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord. Luke And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. And there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands, and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, 
legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. And when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. John. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Luke. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. John. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amanda from Missouri will now read. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. We acknowledge and adore one supreme and infinite God. We acknowledge his Son, one Christ, the Holy Ghost or Divine Comforter, and man in God's image and likeness. Divine mind rightly demands man's entire obedience, affection, and strength. No reservation is made for any lesser loyalty. Ignorance of God is no longer the stepping stone to faith. The only guarantee of obedience is a right apprehension of Him, whom to know a right is life eternal. To ascertain our progress, we must learn where our affections are placed and whom we acknowledge and obey as God. If divine love is becoming nearer, dearer, and more real to us, matter is then submitting to spirit. The objects we pursue and the spirit we manifest reveal our standpoint and show what we are winning. Jesus taught the way of life by demonstration that we may understand how this divine principle heals the sick, casts out error, and triumphs over death. By his obedience to God, he demonstrated more spiritually than all others the principle of being. Every trial of our faith in God makes us stronger. The more difficult seems the material condition to be overcome by spirit, the stronger should be our faith and the purer our love. The Apostle John says, There is no fear in love, 
but perfect love casteth out fear. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Here is a definite and inspired proclamation of Christian science. Mankind must learn that evil is not power. Its so-called despotism is but a phase of nothingness. Christian science despoils the kingdom of evil. As named in Christian science, animal magnetism or hypnotism is the specific term for error or mortal mind. It is the false belief that mind is in matter and is both evil and good. That evil is as real as good and more powerful. This belief has not one quality of truth. It is either ignorant or malicious. In reality, there is no mortal mind and consequently, no transference of mortal thought and willpower. Life and being are of God. In Christian science, man can do no harm, for scientific thoughts are true thoughts, passing from God to man. Every function of the real man is governed by the divine mind. The human mind has no power to kill or to cure, and it has no control over God's man. The divine mind that made man maintains his own image and likeness. The human mind is opposed to God and must be put off, as St. Paul declares. All that really exists is the divine mind and its idea. And in this mind, the entire being is found harmonious and eternal. The straight and narrow way is to see and acknowledge this fact, yield to this power, and follow the leadings of truth. If animal magnetism seems to alleviate or to cure disease, this appearance is deceptive, since error cannot remove the effects of error. Discomfort under error is preferable to comfort. In no instance is the effect of animal magnetism, recently called hypnotism, other than the effect of illusion. Any seeming benefit derived from it is proportional to one's faith in esoteric magic. Animal magnetism has no scientific foundation for God governs all that is real, harmonious, and eternal, and his power is neither animal nor human. Its basis being a belief, and this belief animal, in science, animal magnetism, mesmerism, or hypnotism is a mere negation, possessing neither intelligence, power, nor reality, and in sense, it is an unreal concept of the so-called mortal mind. The mild forms of animal magnetism are disappearing, and its aggressive features are coming to the front. The looms of crime, hidden in the dark recesses of mortal thought, are every hour weaving webs more complicated and subtle. So secret are the present methods of animal magnetism that they ensnare the age into indolence and produce the very apathy on the subject which the criminal desires. Superstition and understanding can never combine. When the final physical and moral effects of Christian science are fully apprehended, the conflict between truth and error, understanding and belief, science and material sense, foreshadowed by the prophets and inaugurated by Jesus, will cease, and spiritual harmony reign. The scripture, Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many, is literally fulfilled when we are conscious of the supremacy of truth. 
by which the nothingness of error is seen. And we know that the nothingness of error is in proportion to its wickedness. He that touches the hem of Christ's robe and masters his mortal beliefs, animality and hate, rejoices in the proof of healing, in a sweet and certain sense that God is love. For victory over a single sin, we give thanks and magnify the Lord of hosts. What shall we say of the mighty conquest over all sin? A louder song, sweeter than has ever before reached high heaven, now rises clearer and nearer to the great heart of Christ, for the accuser is not there, and love sends forth her primal and everlasting strain. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 256. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. O'er waiting harp strings of the mind, there sweeps a strain, low, sad, and sweet, whose measures bind the power of pain, and wake a white-winged angel throng of thoughts, illumined by faith, and breathed in raptured song with love perfumed. Hymn number 256.
Let's now sing hymn number 267. Our God is all in all. His children cannot fear. See baseless evil fall and know that God is here. Hymn number 267.
I will read from Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being and the Collective Passages from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and is infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, Therefore the world knoweth us not, because he knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. For we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Numbers, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. <laughs>